I'm going to cover something that's uh, pretty important to me. And I get a lot of questions. Before I get into this, I'm going to try to rush through this really fast. I'm going to let you know a couple of things. Uh, I get asked a lot about um, money things and also uh, investment topics, uh, real estate, saving, tax, credit, repair, and it goes on and on and on. But a good friend of mine, uh, business partner of mine, um, Sean, Sean Hall, he uh, said, why don't we start with the basics? Now, we used to do these weekly, I think, uh, um, yeah, at least once a week. These meaning helpful lives or helpful videos that we would post for all of the questions. So kind of makes it easier instead of uh, individually. And, I'm, and hey, if I have the time, be happy to individually text you, inbox you, DM, or even talk over the phone. Um, but this kind of helps me to do like an umbrella, helpful post. Um, if, if you know me, I'm trying to add value, help you be the best version of yourself because hashtag sharing is caring. Well, my point is, why don't we start with the basics? For those um, who want to know about a lot of things, like I said in the beginning, a lot of things that uh, I get asked and that we get asked, let's just start with the basics. So um, feel free to share the replay. Um, for those of you who are interested, I'd be happy to share with you the PDF file that has all of the information. I'm going to breathe. I'm just going to quickly just breeze through these uh, 12 points from Marvin J. Ashton uh, as fast as possible because I don't like lengthy videos, to tell you the truth. Even though the, all of the information is helpful and important, I really don't like to take too much time. I know. But if you want, you could just put this in play while you're driving or out for a run or working out. Hopefully this will help you. Okay? So those are my little before I start. Um, once again, Hopefully this helps. We start with the basics, and uh, I get asked all the time for different things, and so I figured. And one last thing before I begin, I just want to reiterate: instead of just jumping ahead to, okay, let's talk about real estate investing, or uh, let's talk about repairing credit or or tax help, I just wanted to start with the basics. Um, once again, shout out to Sean Sean Hall. Uh, he was it was his idea to start with the basics, and why not? Yeah, the fundamentals. So one for the money. Uh, was an address by Marvin J. Ashton back in 1975. These principles still apply today. Um, he was actually quoted and I could say backed up, uh, supported by uh, one Spencer W. Kim and, and, I'll, and I'll get into his supporting comments later. But the American Bar Association has, well, here, this is what the cover of the document or the pamphlet looks like and again if you want this PDF file send me your email I'll be happy to shoot it out to you uh, ASAP before I get busy with these kids this family all right the American Bar Association has indicated that 89% of all divorces can be traced to quarrels and accusations over money um, it goes it actually goes on and on in the home money management between the husband between husband and wife should be on a partnership basis with both parties having a voice in decision and policy making. <clears throat> Once again, I'm quoting Marvin J. Ashton. None of this is from me, myself, and I, just to let you know. So if you see any any statements like this, any, anything you read or you hear me say, come directly from him. I'm, I'm giving credit to where credit's due. Uh, try not to add my own uh, opinions because I agree 100% with everything that's in this, once again, uh, public uh, presentation, I guess you could call it, an address, now a pamphlet, and many, many years later, we're talking 40 plus years later, these principles still apply. So he goes into 12 points of how um, money management or, or all of this budgeting, and budgeting, by the way, we'll get to that, that point one of the 12 obviously that's probably one of the more lengthy ones um, but these 12 should help you with the fundamentals with the basics and it's not a cure-all but the principles once again I stand by them I believe they're eternal so pay an honest tithe 
Successful financial management in every LDS home begins with the payment of an honest tithe. Now, if you are not of uh, our faith, pay the tithing to whatever faith you belong to, but pay it honestly. And um, one statement and one quote that I'll say directly from him is that the likelihood of financial mismanagement will be reduced, end quote. That is, you pay an honest tithe. Financial peace of mind is not determined by how much we make, but it's dependent upon, upon how much we spend. That's very vital. I totally agree with that. Okay, point number two on, the, on these 12 points that will help you with money management. Learn to manage your money before it manages you. Control of the money by one spouse as a source of power and authority causes inequality in the marriage and is inappropriate. I told you I was going to breeze through these, so here we go. Number three, learn self-discipline and self-restraint in money matters. Married couples show genuine maturity when they think of their partners and their family's needs ahead of their own spending impulses. One thing about the advertisements, uh, I'm, I'm going to sum this up because I don't have my, my notes up, but uh, the credit card advertisements, they show you the the, the glamour of swiping the card and charging on the card and paying it off on time. What they don't show is that it, it can be very difficult to pay these credit cards off. Let's just use a credit card because I have the picture here. And it doesn't show how long it takes, how difficult it is to pay it back, and all of the costs and interests that you incur when you do charge it on the card or swipe it or insert the chip. This here is a debt elimination calendar. What you want to do is you want to put a whole full year on the left-hand side um, on the column here. And then on the top of the rows, you're going to um, prioritize your different debts or your different uh, credit cards. As you can see here in this example, we've got credit card number one, and then the furniture, and then we have a dentist bill, physician, and auto loan. Now, you can prioritize by, let's say, uh, the highest interest rate. Let's say the credit card has the highest interest rate out of all of these different uh, debts, or if you uh, if you're just about to pay it off. The whole point of this is, and I believe this is called the snowball effect, is from let's say March to June, you're paying $110 on your credit card until you pay it off. Then you use that $110, $110, add it to your next one in line, which in this case is the furniture. As you can see in July, it started. 110 plus 70, they are using the same amount that they're used, um, paying every month, and then just adding it together. Once the furniture is paid off, if you look in October, they use that 180, add it to the 50 of the dentist, they, they come up with 230, which expedites the paying off of these debts, so on and so forth, until you're done paying off all your debts. Again, I believe this is called a snowball um, method, and... Um, we have used this, and this uh, debt elimination calendar does work. There are more details, and there are more uh, pictures that are related to this. It's on the PDF. I'd be happy to email it to you. Number four, use a budget. Once again, like I said, this one is so expensive because this is basically, if you, if you want to, you can sum it up all in point number four. With the exception of buying a home, paying for education, or making other vital investments, avoid debt and the resulting finance charges. Buy consumer durables and vacations with cash. Avoid installment credit and be very careful with your use of credit cards. They are principally for convenience and for identification. Should not be used carelessly or recklessly. Also, save and invest a specific percentage of your income. And we can go on and on about what you want to invest in. That's not the point today. Today we're just going to go off these 12 Point to continue with point number four. The use of multiple credit cards significantly add significantly adds to the risk of excess debt. Buy used items that you have sufficiently uh, to have saved sufficiently to purchase quality new items. Purchasing poor quality merchandise almost always ends up being very expensive. Save and invest a specific percentage of your income. Kind of sounds familiar, yeah. 
That's the last point in both slides. All right, next. Liquid savings available for emergencies should be sufficient to cover at least three months of all essential family obligations. Once again, liquid savings available for emergencies should be sufficient to cover at least three months of all essential family obligations. Here's a sample um, budget um, worksheet or plan that you can fill out. I'd be happy to share this with you. I only, I only did a little screenshot so you can see um, you put in the budget for the month, year, the income, the planned and actual, and expenditures for planned and actual. And the important thing about this is just to know where you are. I mentioned earlier that um, if you're if you're if you're married, if if you have a, a spouse, that it's important that you both are on page, and that's not like one person take over the finances. And also, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I know I'm gonna butcher it, but. In his teachings, he says that um, we also want to avoid one of the one of the spouses saying, "No, I'll just take a back seat. I, I kind of step out of the whole but family budget or financial responsibility." He's also encouraging us not to do that. So we don't want one to take over it, and we don't want one to say, "Nah, you get a, you know, you take care of it." So again, this is in a PDF file that I'd be happy to share with you for free. Just Shoot me an email, email, DM, inbox. Uh, yeah. Number five, teach family members early the importance of working and earning. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread is not outdated counsel. It is basic to personal welfare. And one of the greatest favors parents can do for their children is to teach them, teach them to work. Now, there are different policies if you want to, uh, go with the uh, allowance or as a payment for doing chores or doing other things, you can work that out. Number six. I was, real quick, I was going to apologize for the background noise, but um, this is, I'm, I'm a family man, so I always have family around. And number two, this is not a, <laughs> we're not in, library or a class this is just me trying to help you out so you get everything with me you get my kids in the back calling me to come and help them do whatever you get kids playing and all that you get all the background noise all right number six teach children to make money decisions in keeping with their capacities to comprehend family unity comes from saving together for a common jointly approved purpose so one of the the points or quotes or teachings that I really like that stuck out to me, and this is this is not the first time we're preparing this uh, PowerPoint presentation. It was not the first time I read this or gone through this, but um, whether it's from before or even now, one of the things that stuck out to me is this next bullet point, and that is, save your money. It it, it, it considers it a hollow pronouncement from a parent to child. Rather, save your money for a dollhouse or a car or a bike or whatever have you. It makes understandable sense. So save your money with a purpose. Number seven, teach each family member to contribute to the total family welfare. Quote, some families miss a tremendous financial and spiritual experience when they fail to sit together and each put in his or her share. End quote. You see the family unity. You see the participation. Um, it's not just, oh, the parents got that, especially... And, and I will quote him on this, when children are accountable. So when they are old enough to work or help or contribute, and that, that is up to you, but when children are older, it's important for them to work and also to contribute. I totally agree with that concept in teaching. Number eight, make education a continuing process. So complete as much formal, full-time education as possible, including trade schools and apprentice programs, it's not doesn't always have to necessarily be uh, colleges or online courses like that. I like how he includes trade schools and apprentice programs. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> this is money well invested. Based on potential lifetime earnings, the hours spent in furthering your education will be very valuable indeed. Use night school and correspondence classes to further prepare. Or in our case nowadays, I mean this again back in 1975. Uh, online courses. 
acquire some special skill or ability that could be used to avoid prolonged unemployment. The ability to do basic home and auto repairs can frequently be helpful as well as a source of family savings. Number nine, work toward home ownership. Home ownership qualifies as an investment, not consumption. Buy the type of home your income will support. Improve the home and beautify the landscape throughout the period you occupy the premises. Oh, I missed the space there. So that if you do sell it, you can use accumulated equity and potential capital gain to acquire a home more suitable to family needs. Number 10, appropriately involve yourself in an insurance program. It is most important to have sufficient medical, automobile, and homeowners insurance and an adequate life insurance program. Costs associated with illness, accident, and death, and death may be so large that the uninsured families can be financially burdened for many years. Very good points, and I totally agree. Almost there. Number 11, understand the influence of external forces on family finances and investments. So inflation continues to offset a major portion of average wage increases. A larger paycheck may not mean more purchasing power and should not be an excuse for extravagant purchases or additional debt. Number 11, understand the influence of external forces on family, family finances and investments. Inflation could you, oh, sorry. Hmm. Did I just read that? I just read that. Uh, okay, number 12. I had to back up. Appropriately involve yourself in the food storage and emergency preparedness program. Accumulate your, accumulate your basic food storage and emergency supplies in a systematic and orderly way. Avoid going into debt for these purposes. And planting and harvesting a garden annually is helpful to the family in many ways, including the food budget eat nutritious foods, and exercise appropriately to improve health, thus avoiding many medical costs. Well, thank you for joining me for these 12 points. I wanted to, I think there's just like uh, two more slides. These few points and suggestions are not intended to be all-inclusive or exhaustive. Rather, it is hoped that a need has been brought to the surface for our serious consideration. We need to recognize and be aware of these basic guidelines for wise money management. I hope uh, you got value out of this. It's the whole reason why I wanted to share this. Um, once again, cover the basics. Um, if you like this kind of thing, let me know. I can put out uh, something like this every week. But if I do, let's say if I do end up sharing more about uh, real estate investing or, I don't know, about, like I said in the past, uh, how to help you with taxes or credit repair and stuff, at least you got the basics. Shoot me an email if you want this PDF file. I'll respond with, uh, and attach it, no strings attached. Um, if you want to inbox me your email and say, hey, please send me uh, that, that PDF file, I'll be happy to do so. I have it on my phone already. I refer to it often. It's easy to just reply, attach, and send. Again, hope you got value out of this. If you did, please share this with a family member or a friend or a teammate. And... Um, Wish you all a very good evening. Stay blessed. Stay thankful. God bless. And aloha.